I started doing this problem of uh, phylogenetics in HIV in about 2000, probably 1999, 2000 was the first paper that we wrote. And at that time, there was nothing which is basically theoretical vaccine research. Okay. People were interested, they had a lot of sequences. In fact, Los Alamos started off this whole project with a sequence database for HIV. They collected all of these sequences and we didn't know what to do with those sequences because it was so much that it couldn't be analyzed. And that's when the Los Alamos computers for the supercomputers for the first time came into play. People started understanding that we can actually bring the power of supercomputing into HIV research and completely change the field. And then a few years later we realized that not only can it be used for this kind of let's say attribution questions, I mean where did HIV originate? how, when did it originate, forgetting that question, we could actually start using it for doing something better, which is that before this, all the vaccines that people had ever developed, they were just trial and error things. Somebody went into the lab, picked up a strain, showed it to the body and said, look, this guy is dangerous. The body made a response against it and remembered the response. That's what we call vaccines today. For HIV, this technique hasn't worked. So we needed something new. And of course, we said, I mean, why not go the simple route of data mining? Just take all the data we have, figure out what HIV looks like, show the body that thing, and that representative HIV, the central HIV, and maybe the body can figure out better what, what makes HIV HIV and make something which is a proper immune response against it. And then, fortunately, a colleague of ours who had was just starting up in his lab and decided to, why not just try it? He built the strain, putting amino acid after amino acid after amino acid. He just built up the whole protein from scratch and tested it. And amazingly, it folded. He took a virus from whose protein he removed, put this protein instead of that, put it into an experimental system, and it infected the cells. It went in, divided, it did everything the virus is supposed to do. Now, of course, typical sequence of an HIV is not what we really want for a vaccine strain. What we want is for, to figure out how does the body think of HIV? What does the body see? Because the body has blind spots. We don't care about those aspects of HIV. We want to see the parts which the body actually sees. So now this becomes a much more challenging issue because all we have is just the set of sequences of HIV and we have some idea of what the humans it came from. From this, we have to now back out some knowledge about the actual biology of the interaction between the virus and the human body and build on top of that. Last year, um, Betty Corber had um, one of the largest data sets available for acute chronics uh, for comparing people that had HIV for a long time versus people uh, that were just newly infected. And the hope was is that um, by contrasting these, in an appropriate way, you could find properties of the viruses in one class or another that were unique. And specifically, if there were uh, forms of the virus only found in acute people, that would be interesting for a vaccine target. We were running on the largest computers at the lab that were available then, and we could only get up to about a thousand sequences, and then we started cutting corners to get any further than that. Now we're running a, a trees that are five times as big it became difficult to visualize even what was in them at all. So this, this tree is uh, rendered in 3D, and the colors refer to different patients. You actually have to look at pieces of it at a time because it's so big. And you can look at it by different properties. So here we are looking at different patients, and in this tree it's the same information, but adding, um, now we're looking at how far along in their progression they were. So here purple means that they were chronic, and these yellow guys, um, are um, acute patients. So uh, it's the kind of signal you'd be looking for would be a, a light color going to a dark color nearby in the tree. So you put these two guys up against each other and you compare their, the sequences associated with the, those nodes on the tree and do that over and over for all these different areas of the tree and um, try and find something in a particular part of the virus that always changes between acute and chronics.